Uh, Shane Steichen is now the head coach of the Indianapolis Colts. We got our guy. Yo, Shane O. I saw a video of him talking to the boys in a team meeting or uh, the night before a game. And he had been taking over play calling duties, I think, since week five last year. And he did not get a lot of credit for that publicly. I did oh. not know that literally until like yesterday when Ian Rapport told us that. Everybody assumed, myself included, that Sirianni was the mastermind behind that offense. Steichen has been the guy that has taken Jalen Hurts from where he was to where he is and what that team was able to accomplish. Obviously, they were the first team in the history of the NFL to score 35 points in a Super Bowl and lose. Jalen throws for 300, runs for another two touchdowns. I mean, that offense, very efficient, very talented. And in a team meeting, I saw Shane Steichen say, it fucking starts tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So he says the word fuck. I love this guy. Huge. I love his energy. I love his resume. I love his success. And I love what we're going to do here in Indianapolis. It was tw plus 25,000 yesterday for the Colts winning the Super Bowl. It is now plus 20,000. I put a quick 500 on there so I can cash out 100 grand next Super Bowl when the Colts go on a run. AQ, how big of a difference is this, pal? This is huge. I just hope that the offensive line that we saw a couple years ago is back. I think that's the biggest thing right now, right? Like, we, we sat there, and we watched this group that was extremely highly paid, right? And we, we were like, okay, nice. this is going to be the group. This is going to be the group. And they weren't good this year. No, they were bad. They, they were, were bad. bad. They were a bad group. So how One game they? was dead. Run offensive game. line was dead. Mm -hmm. The offense seemed to be completely ineffective. Coach gets fired very early in the year. Jeff Saturday comes in. It was a clusterfuck in the Indianapolis Colts. They had the fifth best odds in the AFC to go to the Super Bowl last year. Mm. They ended up, now they're the third worst odds in the NFL to win the Super Bowl. Good. It's amazing what one year can do. But now it seems like we got a guy who's a dog, and I love that. Yeah, especially after targeting Darius Leonard, right? Because like that, that whole conversation kind of went like, hey, yeah, sometimes there would be a standard that some people would have, and then there would be a different standard that, you know, kind of the players thought they were operating at. And, and when you watch that Steichen, little tidbit from the locker room, him talking to the offense, it seemed like he is a, hey, motherfucker, like, let's go and play. There's that five to ten second, you know. Muted. Little, muted, where it's just like, oh, okay, this guy's just motherfucking people in there then. Because that's the only reason they were muted. So I think it's a massive win for the Colts. And then, you know, with that fourth overall pick, hopefully you draft a quarterback that doesn't play with, you know, cinder blocks his feet like Matt Ryan right. last year. And okay. then, you, don't, you know, you have a guy anybody. for the future, though. I mean, you're not, you're not changing every single goddamn year to a new dude, new play caller and all that every shit. Every mock draft, which means absolutely nothing, has us taking a quarterback at four. Mm -hmm. I assume C.J. Stroud's going to be available. And if you look at C.J. Stroud, and you look at what Jalen Hurts was able to accomplish with strike, and you think to yourself, maybe there. Yeah. Hen and Hooker, though, might be a good – you know what I mean? The Colts have a lot of positions that we need some help in. Exactly. Trade yeah. that four, probably get a lot of pieces. You could potentially pick up Hendon Hooker, 6'4", yeah. who can run and throw, and maybe the second round. Yeah, and there's a team that your head coach just came from that has two first-round picks that, you know, maybe you just swap that four for the 10 and the 30 with the Eagles. Now we I, got time. That 30, that 30 area is perfect for Hendon Hooker. Nonetheless, we got a lot of positive mojo over here in Indianapolis. We have breaking news. We have breaking news in the NFL world. Let's pivot away from from the darkness retreat into the desert. The Arizona Cardinals have hired Gannon, Gannon, Gannon as their head coach for this upcoming season. Adam Schefter's reporting Cardinals are finalizing a deal with former Eagles defensive coordinator Jonathan Gannon, Gannon to become their new head coach. Sources tell ESPN the last head coach opening of this hiring cycle is being filled. Eagles now are losing both their defensive and offensive coordinators on the same day. The same day happens to be two days after the Super Bowl in which they were just dancing in. Now, the Philadelphia Eagles have a lot of people that they're, they're going to have to repay or have return and not retire to be able to make a run with a roster. Now they have to fulfill a coaching staff that was incredibly talented and obviously put them in a position to win the goddamn Super Bowl. That's something that's very difficult. Now we have Steichen here in Indianapolis, and Ghanan goes down with Kyler Murray and the Cardinals. Congrats to them. And this is the old adage. When you win, there's enough to go around. It just might not be here. Congrats to Gannon and the Cardinals getting their guy. Yeah, you're, you become like a product of your own success. Like the Eagles do all this. They do all this great stuff. Yeah, unfortunately, they lose in the Super Bowl. But, man, replacing your O and D coordinators both in the same year is not an easy thing to do. And Nick Sirianni and his young uh, what, second year as a head coach, man, it's a lot to, to deal yeah. with and try to figure out how do, I, how do we continue this? How do we continue this greatness? Like that's why we talk about all the time. Like consistency in the NFL is, is very, very difficult to do. Sirianni's coaching tree is hilarious yes. already. Yeah. Two years in. Jeez. 
years. Two years in, already got a couple head coaches underneath him, and that's what yeah. that's a compliment ultimately, ultimate compliment to Nick Sirianni. And you think on the offensive side, they'd be in a little bit better spot because Sirianni at one point did call plays. Now they were not as fantastic, and that was at the beginning of Jalen's career. So is Jalen a different player? Will he regain the play calling duties, or will he continue to delegate to somebody else? But on the defensive side, that's a whole new staff. No, oh, yeah. isn't that a whole new staff that has to come in, or you think they'll just hire from within? I guess we'll find out. Depends if they hire from. Yeah, if you hire from within, then you could expect them to keep some of the people around, I guess, the position coaches. But a lot of times if a new guy comes in, he may keep one or two, but usually they won't keep the whole staff. Well, it depends with what they do with the staff at Arizona, right? Because Vance Joseph and them are still there just like the Colts with the, uh, uh, whatever his name is. Gus Bradley. There it Vance is. Joseph, 3-4 oh. personnel. Gannon, 4-3 personnel. Do they keep Vance Joseph? Oh. Do they adjust? Gannon's going to be calling plays, right, I assume? You would assume. Yeah, and I believe the Eagles – promoted a either an offensive line coach or an offensive coach to OC. Okay, so they're hiring from within, so we yes. don't have to change the entire system that Jalen has learned, which is good with Sirianni there. Yeah. I assume that was a natural fit. Be interested to see what they do on the defensive side of the ball. A lot of names up, too. Cox, Wag, mm -hmm. Graham, Wag, Sue, Wag, Joseph, Wag. Our grapes. Hargraves. What about Redick? What? Is Redick up? I, don't, I think he's... I don't know. Robert Quinn, I believe. Even though he's going to get paid whenever he is. Yes, definitely going to get paid. I heard a little bit more about his story, you know, Temple. Temple, Matt Rule guy, right? In Temple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think from, you know, obviously incredibly difficult circumstances yeah. growing up. He's a dog. Dog. Absolute dog. Yes, yeah, he's a hell of a football player. Be excited to see what the Philadelphia Eagles become. And the Philadelphia fans, I assume, just naturally are going to say, oh, we we're going to suck. We yeah, lose all of our coaches. We lose our players. I have faith in Jalen Hurts and Sirianni. I think they're going to be back in the Super Bowl during their tenure. But congrats to the Cardinals finding their person. Surprising it's not an offensive person with Kyler Murray. Yeah, a little bit. But from what we heard about their head coaching pattern, right, it kind of makes sense What now. was that, AQ? Yeah, so that's that's kind of – every time they've – so when they went Bruce Arians, they went – full tilt the other way defense, go with Wilkes. Then when that doesn't work, they go full tilt the other way to Cliff Kingsbury. When that doesn't work, now we go back full to the defense. I'll be excited to see how it goes because if Kyler has success, that person's going to get a head coaching job and they're going to have to do that again, get somebody that gets along with Kyler. You know, and let's assume Kyler and Cliff just weren't right and that's an anomaly of Kyler's situation. And going forward, he'll be able to be able to get along and do whatever he – He's asked with whatever offense that comes, but that's a real that's a real dilemma for a defensive head coach in this modern era of offensive weaponry and quarterbacks being the most important people of all time. And I doubt this is going to happen, but now that we're talking about it, it is something that like it could be good fodder. I mean, we're talking about Justin Fields getting traded. Whole new coaching staff going to Arizona. They have the third overall pick. Is it that absurd to think that they Arizona? They gave him two hundred million. You think they'll yeah. trade him? I mean, sure, you, you, what, you lose one year, you lose some cap space when the cap's going to 220, but you're at the third overall pick. Does Gannon think that he'll ever have a pick that high again? Fascinating. Interesting situations brewing everywhere. Chicago, what are they going to do with Justin Fields? Somebody had him going to the Panthers just a couple yep. of days ago.